um, diluting in the sense they may they may not use word but I think this has been uh, uh, this has been used in our uh, you know yeah in our India to society a lot especially in this country so maybe uh, how do we see that like, you know um, we are really seeing like you know, uh, the the uh, the efficacy of the instruction. So, for instance, like you know, let's say if you keep on saying that like no PSC, uh, whatever you're doing is good. Uh, in, in, now, in this audience where we have some most of the <coughs> are practicing now. Now, and and this uh, for this kind of audience, or when we give them a message, so don't we give uh, the message what is there said in the scripture, or or do we have to still uh, present it in a way that it can be based on audience? Like, okay, how they can good question. So, I was mean, one 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 uh, corollary. I I didn't know this one is that now one thing what will happen? Uh, for instance, let's say um, the bar, the standards. If you don't keep it high, okay, if you always keep it low, then what will happen? Like, you know, all the people who might cross it are much higher. They will feel that they are other followers of the rules. So why do I actually have to aspire for more? So how yes. do I know it's it's a, it's a matter of uh, balance and maybe it's a, that's a good point. That's a two good point. Is that we may dilute the standards or dilute the teachings in the name of reaching out to new people, but then for those who are serious, might we dilute for them also? And we might actually make the goal itself lower and nobody will aspire for something higher in their lives. Yes, that's definitely possible. And there are to be safeguards for that. So one of the safeguards is that, you know, although I, I can, I will speak self-help in corporate companies, I'll never speak self-help in a Bhagavatam class. That I will not, and that's what Bhagavatam class has to be Bhagavatam class. In Bhakti Shastri, Bhakti Vaibhava, we should not be teaching self help over there. We should be teaching scripture directly. And that is a significant point that there are people who are interested in scripture directly also. One of my friends is a, is a Tamil Brahmin and he says that he has joined some Tamil, Tamil Bhavita class, which is conducted by one Sri Vaishnava teacher. And they have a class for about two hours every week and they have around 1,000 people joining from all over the world. It's straight Bhagavad Gita. Now, what does this word mean? I think Acharya's commentaries we have. Like, what does this word mean? What does the word, what does word mean? I was thinking in ISKCON, we don't have 1,000 people who will be interested in Acharya's commentaries. Serious study of the Bhagavad Gita. Said, so there are people who are interested in direct study of scripture also. So my understanding is that the focus of my point is that give people what they need. And if people are interested in serious Krishna Katha, we should give them serious Krishna Katha. As if we take somebody for Vrindavan Yatra and they are, if they are interested in Vrindavan Yatra, that time we don't have to use self help. But speak about Krishna at that point. So giving people what they need means recognizing where they are. And we, have, we definitely have to have a pathway. So if you consider the nine stages of Bhakti, Adav, Shraddha, Sadhu, Sangha, Bhajana, Kriya, Nathani, Vritti. So somebody who needs to develop Shraddha, if we tell them about Anathani Vritti, they don't even consider it to be an anartha at that time. Say, What's wrong? Like I saw when I do it, I do it. Discover the passion within you. Well, passion is Rajoguna. Passion can be used in a positive sense. But uh, it will basically refer to sensual. Become sensual. Enjoy your senses like that. Well, tell them you don't have another thing. The first develop Shraddha that these saintly people, these spiritual people, they have some, something valuable to say. So we will have some, some devotees. Who will whose primary focus may be on, on cultivating on bringing Shraddha in people. And they may not even talk about Anathan Yuruti. They may focus only on that, yeah, these spiritual people, they have some wisdom. They're not just escapists, they're not just impractical. They have some wisdom. So Shraddha is there. And from there, Sadhu Sangha will come. So then we have to have somebody who talks about Anathan Yuruti. We have to talk, have somebody who talks about Ruchi and Prema. We don't hardly ever talk about that at all. So it's, it's important for us that we talk about that also. I did a series of podcasts with Madhavan Pro and Amarendra Pro on the Gopi Geet. And actually we had to take one and a half, one session just can we discuss the Gopi Geet. That's, a, that's the core of our tradition. We need to discuss it. If we don't discuss it, what is going to happen? Again, the same principle. There are devotees who are 20, 30, 40, 30 years in a moment. And they feel, I don't know Krishna at all. 
and then they hear about Krishna and they go to Gaudiya Math, they go to other Gaudiya groups, non Gaudiya Math Gaudiya groups, and they feel my Krishna Bhakti is being nourished by hearing this. You can't be provided in our moment. So that's why a broadness of understanding of Krishna consciousness. So it may be speaking more devotional stuff than what we have spoken, what we normally speak in our classes. It may be speaking less devotional stuff than what we have what we have. Everything is needed. So is dilution possible? Yes, dilution is possible, but it's important to understand if you use the word deviation, it's a stronger word. But deviation can happen not just through pandering to the contemporary world. Deviation can happen by pandering to the traditional world also. The caste system, that's a deviation. But the casteist mentality that comes in where we label people based on their birth, that can come in our moment also. So the smart the Brahman mentality, there could be a the leftist ultra-liberal mentality that could come as a contamination because of pandering to the contemporary world. But if you start pandering to the pandering to the um, what is it, sorry, pandering to the to the smarter world, then we may actually end up deviating. I know there are devotees who feel that who have spent a lot of time in India. And especially so the traditional groups. And they say, actually, if somebody not born in a Brahmana family, they cannot be a guru. So they actually start, start evaluating Vaishnavas not by their present Vaishnava standards of practice, of their devotion, but by their birth. One devotee, very serious devotee, says, I will never take initiation from a guru who is not born in India. Well, is this a teaching of Shri Prabhupada? They say that anybody not born in... So there are traditional groups who say if you're not born in Aryavarta, you can practice, but you cannot teach. You will never, never have the radical to teach. So deviation can come from there also. So we have to be on guard against the for deviation from all sides. And dilution, so dilution, deviation, these are always dangers that are there. And ultimately, uh, as we keep practicing bhakti, two things. The protection against deviation is twofold in my understanding. Now we need to come to at least a Sattvaguna by which we connect with Krishna in our heart, so that our Viveka Buddha becomes strong. And second is, we maintain Guriya Mankhyati Vichyati. We have open relationship with devotees. So that if we are doing something wrong, those devotees should be able to speak to us. And we can also share our heart without having to be too defensive. This is what I'm thinking, this is what I'm doing. Does this make sense to you? Or do you have some concerns about it? So if we do those things, you know, we practice, we try not just ch chant a large number of songs, that's good. But we overall try to come at least one. Prabhupada says in the Nectar of Intro in Instruction Introduction, once you come to the mode of goodness, how to advance further will be revealed. And so that can be revealed from the within by Paramatma, the Dhamma, the Yogam, the, or that can be revealed by Paramatma through the association of devotees. So if you do those two things, you know, be open to feedback from other devotees and try to connect with Krishna in the heart then we will, we will stay safe. But then sometimes what happens is, in the name of thinking that I am following purely, our, our, our insistence on purity can steal our humility. That means, you know, ah, this is the pure standard and I am following it. You are not following it. What, can, what is there for you to teach me? You don't have to teach. I am here to teach you. So, purity can very easily lead to arrogance. We don't call it arrogance, but it will be arrogance. Where somebody starts thinking, I am alone and following purely. And nobody else is following as purely as I am. Well, what is purity actually? Is purity simply the purity of our connection with Krishna? Or is purity the pure, our concern for others? So if somebody is acting with concern for others purely, not considering you want to, I want to make you my follower, but I want to benefit you from where you are. From the world's perspective, that purity is more important. Because they will say that you are concerned about me, that you want to help me, not just that you want to convert me to your religion. And they see that, and we may say, I am purely, more, I'm not getting you to follow my religion. I want to take you to Prabhupada, to Krishna. But they don't see that. 
what do they see is that no okay you just simply want me to con to want to convert me to your religion so purity also has multiple aspects is it just the purity in terms of our motivation to connect people with krishna or our motivation to actually help others without considering personal gain so the, the third part of facilitation so where we say that the first part of you're talking about you know in one year we want to get people here get people here you know how much of that is selflessly motivated and how much of it is selfishly motivated selfishly motivated i want people to serve me i want people to assist me i want people who will obey me and somebody who is just sharing wisdom and that person does not seek any following that person does not have any following but many people are inspired by that who knows who is more selflessly motivated so when we are expecting commitment from others is it so that they will assist us in our plans i may say my plans are for krishna but still they are my plans will i be equally happy if that person becomes a devotee and starts following somebody else with the practice of bhakti but that person does it follow me will i be just as happy or i just want to expand my yes men or yes women so purity is not as simple as we think there are a lot of layers to purity and just purely following prabhupada it's not as simple so my understanding is more than purity focus on humility yes and this is where i want to connect with krishna but i won't be judging if somebody who has been following prabhupada for many years and they are they are practicing bhakti in a way that is different from how i am practicing well if i want i can try to clarify with them understand them if i can't understand them this is not what i feel inspired to do this is not what i will do but i don't have to make it my mission to criticize that they are from they are practicing a diluted form of bhakti and so sometimes our emphasis on purity can steal our humility and that i feel is a great danger because of which there are a lot of conflicts in the devotee movement that you know i am following purely and therefore you are a deviant it's a very serious accusation to put on anyone that you are diluting or you are deviating because they may be they, they may be inspired by prabhupad from within his within their heart to practice or share in a particular way so claiming to have a monopoly on purity claiming to have a monopoly on prabhupad's vision prabhupad's mood and mission oh, that i would see is a far greater danger than anything else i was talking with one senior prabhupad disciple in florida asking him you know so i asked him what is the greatest uh, what would be the best thing for our preaching what is the worst thing most dangerous thing for our preaching the best thing is that if you can imbibe prabhupad's mood of of compassion prabhupad's mood of prabhupad's vigor for sharing bhakti and he said what is the greatest danger he said prabhupad said <laughs> prabhupad said he said you know, prabhupad said this prabhupad said this we can weaponize prabhupad's quotes for our own purposes and then prabhupad has said many different things at different places and we may weaponize prabhupad's quotes to actually do this service to prabhupad's mission so prabhupad's quotes are of course to be important are important they have to be respected however niyamagraha means sticking to the letter of the law while forgetting the spirit of the purpose of the law sometimes we may stick so much to prabhupad's quotes that we forget prabhupad's purpose prabhupad's purpose was to help people raise their consciousness to krishna the big subject please if you thoughts one last question yeah i think everybody is getting uh, updated um but uh, see as an institution and uh, we also need to maintain certain standards uh, uh, perfectly right okay now so, so where do we draw that line mm -hmm. i know that's why i think we will need we will need many sister institutions sister concerns uh, right. that's why say for example we have a certain morning program standard mm -hmm. now if we have our youth centers we don't have the same morning program standard but we don't call them as a school we call them by a different name so we need different forums so yes there's a difference between what iskon can do and what devotees can do so iskon as if somebody is an office bearer of iskon and they are speaking in iskon capacity like i know a couple of devotees in india they are very much into hindutva and there are valid concerns there are 
there are other there are extremist groups from various religious traditions who are become very aggressive so they are, they are active on social media but what we as a part of this conversation told them is that if you are going to have that kind of posts on your social media don't mention your iscon connection don't say that you are iscon iscon vice president or iscon temple by president and you are posting that. that's your personal interest do that but don't highlight your iscon connection on there so the devotees are individuals and as individuals devotees may be inspired to do many things and we can't cannot legislate inspiration but what all iscon can do that is open to question so for example now one of the biggest western levels of western outreach that's happening is through yoga now maybe 5 10 years ago the idea of having yoga classes inside temples would have been considered sacrilegious but now we have had temples which are like multi dimensional is a temple and there are other things in the temple so in a temple can we have in the temple premises can we have a yoga studio well, why not we won't we don't want to teach yoga asanas inside the temple hall in front of the devis but does that mean we can't teach them elsewhere so that is a slightly dicey question but what is happening is that at least devotees are doing that and they are able to connect people with krishna so we need to differentiate between one of my devotee friends is the difference between iskon and the hari krishna movement he said that the hari krishna movement is much bigger than iskon in that sense that there are many devotees who may be inspired individually to practice things and they will be doing things which will not be exactly affiliated with iskon but they are broadly inspired by the principles of iskon most of the the churches you know there there is one one catholic who wrote a book and the Christian, they have the idea of the the lost sheep. The sheep get lost, and Jesus is the shepherd who gets the sheep back. So he's written a book called the Lost Shepherd. So he says that many of the pastors and the popes they are themselves lost. They don't understand Catholicism properly. He gives some interesting statistics. He says most of the humanitarian work, most the outreach work, some seventy percent of the outreach work that is done by Christians is not through the church. it is a sister of a sister organization of the of the church so we as a movement will also need that work to happen yes iskon has to preserve its standards but that does not mean iskon has to mandate or impose those standards on every single devotee so food for life is is it a iskon initiative or is it a iskon associated initiative no we don't want just poor people to come into the temple just for eating food but does that mean if a devotee feels inspired they can't go and give food in charity well yes now how much of the temple resources should be involved that has to be decided so the ideal would be that if the temple resources are not involved much this is kind of a certain issue and you would be doing that so yes your concern is very valid so it's not what prabhu pad is trying to scorn for that has to this kind has to focus on that but in my eyes prabhu pad's vision was much bigger than this kind prabhu said you know krishna consciousness prabhu pad said scorn is my body prabhu pad also said The fundamental teaching was we are not our bodies. So, so that means that Bhupan's spirit can be continued through his call and through affiliated affiliated association, affiliated organizations, institutions, and concerns also. And we don't have to have that level of rigid control on those things. Okay. Thank you very much. La Prabhupad ki, Gaur Bhakti Vrinda ki, Gaur Primanande. There is a sad attitude to this place. I think I am going to go, but I will be happy. Hari Bol. Hari Bol.